Hi everyone and welcome back. The geek of the control engineering is here. Throughout this video, I am going to introduce the solution of the unconstrained MPC problem. Before jumping into our subject, I would like to state that most of the materials presented in this video is taken from the great book. Predictive Control with Constraints, which is written by J.M. Macy Joski. Solving the MPC problem requires, first, classifying the undertaken problem. Whether it is constrained or unconstrained. Let us stick to unconstrained MPC problems in this video. Given that, the cost function that our MPC attempts to minimize is given as this function can be written in a vector and matrix format as shown, in which we have defined the vectors as following. Z of k is the stack vector of the future prediction of the controlled process output. Tau of k is the desired reference future trajectory. And delta u of k is the stack vector of the future control changes. Also, we have defined the following two matrices. Sigma is the diagonal matrix of the weight Q, and R is a similar matrix but for the weight on the control action change. At this point, please, observe the length or the size of each of these quantities which depends on the state or control prediction horizons HP and HU. Now, with the defined matrices and vectors, it is time to combine the process model into the cost function. To do that, we have to remember that our MPC problem has to satisfy the given model at any time in the future. As we have seen in a previous related video, the prediction of the future states, based on the repeated application of the process given model, is given by while the future prediction of the controlled output Z hat can simply be found by then we can write the corresponding future prediction of z hat as to formulate this prediction in a vector and matrix representation let us give in the following names for each shown matrices the first matrix is named as the capital psi while the second and third ones are named as capital u psilon as well as capital theta and by using the previously defined vectors we have the right to write the following expression of the capital Z at time k. Note that, this equation collects all future dynamics along the horizons HP and HU in a single equation. To substitute the last expression into the cost function, we need to define the following. This can be thought of as a tracking error, in the sense that it is the difference between the future target trajectory tau of k and the free response of the system. The process free response occurs over the prediction horizon if no input changes are made, that is delta u of k is zero. With this definition, we can reformulate the vector matrix form of the cost v of k as following. Now, by applying the norm definition, we can expand this relation even more as. And finally, we can write it in the form of a quadratic function as. Where the optimization variable here is the delta u of k. Thus, as a final step, we have the following quadratic function. Where the new utilized matrices are given as. Here, the first term is constant, as it does not depend on our variable delta u of k. Please see the MATLAB function quad prag for more information about this function. It is interesting to state that both the new defined matrices do not depend on the delta u of k, our optimization variable. Now let us stick to our last function. Which through it, we attempt to finding the optimum control change action sequence. To find the optimum delta u of k, we need to compute the gradient of V of K and then equal it to zero. The gradient is. And by equaling it to zero and then, solving for the delta U of K, we have the optimum control change sequence is given as. Do not forget, as a part of the receding horizon technique, 
We use only the part of this optimum sequence corresponding to the first step. So, if the number of the process inputs is L, then we just use the first L rows of the sequence delta U of K optimum as shown. Here, IL is the L by L identity matrix, while, 0 L is the L by L0 matrix. Note that, we wrote delta U of K optimum rather than delta U hat of K. This is because we have now found the solution and this is the input that will be applied at next sampling. At this step, we have computed the optimum control change sequence. However, there is a question that needs an answer. Does this control change sequence really give a minimum of our cost function V of K? It is well known that for a quadratic function to have a unique minimum point, the second gradient of the function has to be positive definite. Since we have defined a quadratic cost function, let us drive the second gradient of the function V of K. Starting by taking the gradient of the first gradient function. The second gradient of a scalar function is known as the Hessian. This is equivalent, of course, of differentiating the cost function V O K twice. Performing this operation, the result would be as shown. This expression of matrices has to be positive definite. In order for this to be true, we need to examine our definitions of the original weighing matrices Q and R. We have defined that Q at any future time i, is semi-positive definite. This, however, implies that the first term in the above Hessian is semi-positive definite. So if the matrix R is positive definite, then our Hessian is certainly positive definite, which is enough to guarantee that we have a unique minimum. And this will be the case if R of I positive definite for each I. But sometimes we may want to have no penalty on the control inputs, which would lead to R B0. In this case, we need the first term in the Hessian matrix to be positive definite, in order to have a minimum. In a more general case, we may want to leave the moves of some inputs unpenalized, or the moves at some points in the control horizon unpenalized. Here, we will have R as a semi-positive definite matrix. In this case, however, we need all the Hessian be positive definite. So far, we have worked our way from the formulating of the unconstrained MPC problem from the cost function as well as the process model and the final combination is given as. Here, the involved matrices are given as. We, then, took the gradient of this function and computed the optimum control change moves by equaling the result to zero and solving for delta U of K. As a part of the receding horizon technique, we are going to need the first L moves of the computed optimal delta U of K. Now, we can represent the supplied control change as a state feedback controller. The last term in this expression, epsilon of k, or the tracking error, is the only part of this solution that changes from step to step. Thus, we can imagine that this term is our state feedback. The terms that underlined by the red line could be our controller gain. So, we eventually had a state feedback alike controller. This is true, because we are dealing with unconstrained MPC problem. For constrained MPC, however, the story differs completely, as we will see in the next video. If you find this presentation helpful, please do not forget to like, subscribe and active the ring button. Thanks again for watching the video and see you soon.